Hi everyone, in this video I'll be going over how to create motion and animation using Processing and Java. Before starting this video, you should already have Processing installed from Processing.org and you should be familiar with how to draw simple shapes and colors as well as how to use variables and conditional statements, which you can find in the previous video that I made before this one. So let's open up Processing and go ahead and get started. What I have right here is just a processing sketch file that has a setup uh, function and an empty draw function. And the setup function is setting the size to 400 by 500 and the background to gray. And this is the window that appears when I run this. And so what I'll be doing is I'll be adding into the draw function to draw some things on the screen. And um, as I mentioned in the previous video, the draw function is run every frame and the frame rate by default is set to 60 frames per second. So this draw uh, function is going to run 60 times per second. So I'll go ahead and stop running this for now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle here and I'll go ahead and draw it in the center of the screen. So we'll do width over two for the X position and height over two for the uh, Y position. And let's go ahead and just say 100 by 50. And if I go ahead and run this, what I have right now is just a white rectangle and it is starting the starting corner in the uh, center of the screen and then it is drawing the width and the height based on that. So I want to go ahead and add some variables to this. So I'm going to go up above my setup function. Um, so I can create some variables up here and I'm going to create a variable called W, which will be the width. And this will be the width of my rectangle, which right now is 100. And then I will make another int H, which will be the height of the rectangle, which will be 50. Now, instead of uh, the width and the height, here, uh, instead of 150 here, I can replace this with this W and H variables. And what's great now is I can actually update um, my variables inside of this draw function. So uh, I can, after each time, essentially this is going to run a bunch of times. So after each time I draw this rectangle, I could change my W value. So let's say uh, my W value equals W, we'll just do W plus one for now. So I'm adding one to the width each time. And let's go ahead and run it. And now you can see the rectangle is growing to the right. And if I change this to minus one, what's gonna happen is it's shrinking, but it's leaving this black over here. This was actually the edge uh, of the rectangle as it was being drawn on each frame. So the outline is black. Um, and so it is leaving this behind. And that is because if we are only ever drawing the background once. And so then on each frame, we are redrawing the rectangle, but we are never changing the background. So if you want to be able to do things with the animation, you actually probably want to redraw your background each time. That way you are drawing your new frame from scratch each time. So let's do background 100. Now when I run this, I can see my rectangle shrinks and then it grows uh, to the left hand side. Um, so this is changing the width of the rectangle on each frame. Instead of changing the width, I could move the rectangle each frame. So let's uh, get rid of our change to our W value. We'll add a new int up here. And we'll start our int x equals um, it, what I want to do is I want to use the width of my frame. Um, but uh, unfortunately, when I'm creating my variables up here, this happens before setup is run. So this is uh, this. I don't know what the width is at this point. So I have not set the width of my frame yet. So I'm actually just going to make an int called X. And then in my setup function here, I'm going to set X equals width. And now instead of when I'm drawing my rect, instead of doing width over two, I'm going to change this to X. And then I'm going to update my X value. X equals X minus one. 
And so now my rectangle is moving from the left hand side of the or from the right hand side of the screen to the left hand side of the screen. And so that's how you can update the position of something. Now, one thing that's important to know because draw is happening 60 times per second. Um, this is uh, a, a good frame rate for seeing animations play visually. However, not all computers will be able to run the animation that quickly. And um, so on lower end computers, you might run into an issue where it's actually lowering the frame rate. And what happens when you're animating something on every frame, if you're not taking into account the frame rate, then on different computers, it might run at different speeds. This is particularly a problem in video game development because you want the gameplay to happen at the same speed on everybody's computers. So what we can do is we can actually access the frame rate and it will figure out how fast it is running on that computer and we can then uh, we can then change the speed of our animation based on the speed the frame rate is running on that computer. So to account for frame rate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, first, I want to make a separate variable that I'll be able to use to determine the speed uh, that I want this thing to move. And that way I can be adjusting um, the speed in one spot up here instead of needing to adjust it down here. Um, right now I'm just uh, adjusting it by one each frame, but I might want to be able to set a specific speed. So let's set a float called speed equal to... 100 and now in when I'm updating my x value instead of subtracting 1 what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract speed divided by frame rate and you'll see frame rate turns pink because this is um, this is a, a keyword in processing um, so it is going to determine what is the frame rate that this is running at. Um, now it is giving me a squiggly line because my X value is an int right now and I am updating it based on um, these two values which are floats and so when it does this division it is going to get a floating point value which will be a decimal point and so it wants, um, it, it can't store that as an int. So what I'm going to do is change my X to a float and that will fix that squiggly line. Um, so now when I run this, we don't really see much of a difference right now, um, but we can test this at different frame rates just to see how it works at different frame rates. So in my setup, I could specify a frame rate that I want to test it at. So if I'm on a pretty good computer, maybe I can actually run at a frame rate of 120. And I can see that this is still moving at about the same speed. Uh, if I was on a lower end computer, what happens if I am on a computer that only runs at 30 frames per second? And you can see it is still running at about the same speed. You can almost see the frames a little bit at 30 frames per second. Uh, probably not in the video, you won't be able to. Um, but if you bring it down to something like 10 frames per second, you'll actually be able to see the frames. So the rectangle is actually still moving at the same speed, but you can definitely see the frames as they are happening. Um, so, it, and if you wanted to see just to um, to understand how uh, adapting the frame rate is helping here. Um, if we were to change this back for a moment, if we change this back to one, um, and let's start with our regular, uh, let's start with a, our high end frame rate of 120. And so that's moving pretty quickly across the screen. And if we drop this down to 10, now it is moving very slowly across the screen. So this uh, shows you why it's important to adjust your animations based on the frame rate. That way it will run the same on every computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and put back in my frame rate adjustment and I'll get rid of this line and we'll just let it go back to its default frame rate, uh, which is uh, 60 by default if the computer can run at 60 frames per second. Now let's look at moving some things, uh, having more than one shape on the screen that's moving at the same time. So I'm going to make a second X value. I'm just gonna call this one X2. And um, I'm actually gonna, instead of starting on the right hand side of the screen, I'm gonna start on the left hand side of the screen. So I'll set, uh, I'll actually set both of these to zero. And I'm gonna get rid of this line X equals width from my setup function. So uh, now I have X and X2, both starting on the left-hand side of the screen. I'm going to change speed. I'm going to say this is my fast one. And then I'm going to make a second one called slow. 
let's say that one is 50. And so I'm going to, I, I was using the word speed before, I need to replace this now. This will be my fast rectangle. And it is using X, and so I'm going to draw another rectangle. And this one will use X2. And I am going to move it um, a little bit higher than the other one. So we'll say height divided by two minus, uh, let's do minus 60. So I'm moving it 60 units up. Remember, uh, smaller Y values are closer to the top. So this is my Y value. Subtracting 60 means it moves higher. Um, and then I will give it the same width and height as the other rectangle. Um, and I need to also update my x2 value. So I'm going to say x2 equals x2 minus slow divided by frame rate. Uh, one other thing that might be a good idea is I'm going to make my two rectangles different colors. So I'm going to say this first rectangle is, um, let's do 100 for red and... 50 for green and 255 for blue. So instead of just using um, solid red or solid green or solid blue, I'm going s sort of a, a somewhere in between for this one. And then my second rectangle. Uh, so my first rectangle is mostly blue, but it does have a hint of red and green. And so my second rectangle, I am going to make mostly red uh, with a hint of green and blue. And now let's run this and see what happens. Oh, and I forgot to switch them to go the other direction. They are both still moving to the left. Uh, so to move them to the right, instead of updating x uh, with minus each time, I'm going to do plus. And uh, remember, x starts at zero on the left-hand side, and it increases uh, to the right. So we'll change both of those minus to plus. And now we have a little race going here. So we can see the purple one moves faster than the orange one. Um, so this is the orange one here, this one is using the slow speed. And so my slow speed is less than my fast speed. And so that one is moving slower. Uh, one last thing I wanted to show is um, you can also, we can add a uh, ellipse. We did ellipses in the previous video. You can also do a circle, which is like an ellipse, but it has the same width and height. Um, so we can do, uh, let's make another variable, which will be for our circle, uh, the size of our circle, so we can increase or decrease the size of our circle when we're animating. Um, so I'm going to start it with a size of 100. And so then I will give, let's do another uh, different fill color. So let's do 50, 255, 100. So this one will be a greenish sort of circle. Um, and then I will do a circle at, um, I don't want this to be in the way of my rectangle race, so I'm going to move this down the screen. So let's do width over two for the X position, and the Y position will be height over two plus 60. So this will be lower on the screen. And then the size of my circle, I made a variable called C. And then I want to update my C on each frame. And I want to show you just a little shorthand. And so I've been doing um, X equals X plus uh, or minus, uh, uh, and you can actually combine those together. So I'm going to do C minus equals, so it'll get smaller. And I'll do, um, I want to set a speed, a speed variable. Let's try um, let's do 100 again, so for the speed. Um, I actually I already have one. I have fast set to 100 uh, for that fast speed. Um, so let's actually just go somewhere in between. So let's do uh, speed equals 70. This will be my speed of change for the size of the circle. And so we'll do speed divided by frame rate. And so this minus equals, this is the same as saying C equals C minus speed divided by frame rate. Uh, so it's just a sort of a shorthand way to do that. 
And so now I have a circle that is shrinking. Um, and once it goes negative, it actually starts growing. Um, so it will use a negative uh, dimension for the size as well. And so um, once this becomes a negative number, it continues to go negative. And so it actually um, flips inside out. You could, you could think of it like that. So like the circle is uh, has a negative size, but it, it still appears to be growing. Um, so that shows you how you can have um, things moving by position. You can move them at different speeds and you can have uh, things changing in size. So hopefully that gives you a good understanding of how to do animation with some very simple shapes in uh, processing and Java. And I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you'll tune in for the next video.